Welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create your own basic curtain panel. You can see it has a pocket at the top in which the rod goes into. I'll also show you how to take your measurements and figure out how much yardage you need in order to create your curtains. So let's get started. Making your own curtains is not as hard as you think. The most important thing is figuring out how much fabric you're going to need. And to do that, we're going to need to get our window measurement. So the first thing we're going to measure is the width of the window. So from one end to the next. And if you have a curtain rod that extends past the window frame, go ahead and measure from one end of the curtain rod to the other. So for my example, I'm going to pretend it's 18 inches from one end to the other. Next, we're going to do the length of the window or the height. So what you need to think about is how long you want your curtain to be. So if you just want from the top of your curtain rod down to the bottom of the window, you would do that. If you want it to the floor, you would do that. Or if you just want to do a short valance, and maybe it only goes to, to this first window pane right here, then you would just do that. So you got to think, okay, how long do I want my curtain to be? And then you measure that. So I'm measuring from the top edge of the rod to the bottom of my window because that's what I want. and I'm gonna write down my measurement for that. So once we have that, now we can try to figure out how much fabric we're going to need. Now if I just straight up get 18 inches of fabric, put it on my rod, it's just gonna lie flat. There's not gonna be any gathering, any fullness, what we expect in our curtain panel. So what we do is we take our width of our fabric and we multiply it by a number to create that fullness. So it's usually one and a half to three times. Now I like a nice even number, so I just like picking two. So two times the width is gonna tell me how much fabric I need to create the gather for going across the width of my window. So 18 inches times two, 36 inches, perfect. So now we're gonna worry about the length of the curtain. Now, if I just get straight up 40 inches, that is not taken into account the curtain rod or the hemline, which is very important. So first, let's tackle the curtain rod. So let's say this is my curtain rod, and it happens to be one inch in width. And that is included in my 40 inches, because I went up to the top edge of my curtain rod, and then I went down whatever my length is. So I have a one inch curtain rod, now, it's not taken into account that my fabric needs to go be also behind the curtain rod and go under a little bit in order to create a pocket at the top so we can slip the rod through the top of the curtain. So you're going to take whatever number this is and we're going to add it to our 40 inches. So we have the one inch curtain rod plus how much you wanna tuck under in order to create a nice neat pocket so I'm gonna add another extra half inch. And I'm going to add that to my 40 inches. So that equals one and a half inches that I'm adding. So 40 plus one and a half, nice even number. So that's gonna be 41 and a half. Now we gotta consider the hem line. So how much do you wanna hem it at the bottom? I'm going to pick one and a half because it's nice and easy. So hem is another one and a half inches. I'm going to add that to this number right here. So 41, 42, then another inch is 43. So plus this number, you get whatever you need for the length of the curtain. So together, I'm gonna need a piece of fabric that's 36 inches by 43 inches. All right, so the next step is figuring out how much fabric we're going to need. So in my particular case, 36 inches is the width going across the window and I need 43 going down the length of the window. So these are my measurements that I'm trying to figure out. So you normally have a choice. You can use 45 inch width fabric or 58 slash 60 inch width fabric. So you're gonna check the end of the fabric bolt to see what width fabric yours is in particular. 
Now, if you're using a print or you're using a solid, so it doesn't matter which way the fabric is laid on the window, it makes it a little bit easier because then you could just purchase the least amount of fabric as possible. If you're trying to make sure that a print is going a certain way, you may need to purchase a little extra fabric, but we're gonna do the first way. So for this example, it doesn't matter which way the fabric goes on the window, it's gonna look the same regardless. If the fabric you're using is 45 inches in width, I can fit my 43 inch length in that 45 because this is the max length that I have to purchase anyways. So the 43 goes into 45, which means I need to only purchase 36 inches of fabric. So 36 inches is one yard. So that makes it easy. I only need to purchase one yard of fabric. Now, if it's 58 and 60 inches or 60 inches, you again, this is the biggest number that I have. So I would use the 43 inches to go into the width and I would just purchase 36 inches. So it'd be a yard. So obviously this is gonna be longer than your 43 inches. So then you have a choice, either make your curtain longer or you trim down a little bit to make it shorter. So here's my example here. My 36 is going across here. Here is the width of my fabric in this particular case. I'm saying it's 45 inches. So I need to purchase 36 inches or one yard to serve that. So again, there's the two inch differences, so I can either make my hem larger or I could just trim off a little bit of the bottom or just make the curtain a little bit longer. Now, when it gets a little tricky is if you're saying, but I don't want my stripes to go horizontally across the window, I want them to go up and down. So if you wanna do that, so you're taking your 45 inch width or your 60 inch width and you're rotating it like this, Going across the width of the window, you automatically have 45 inches. You only need 36. Now you can either trim it off or you can just leave it. Since we already doubled the width of our window, a little extra gathering isn't gonna make that much of a difference. So this is fine. So I turned it sideways and that works perfectly. But I still need 43 inches going down my window. So this, part is what I need to purchase. Now for me, it's 43. I'm just gonna round it up to 45 because that gives me an even yardage. I can't just ask for 43 inches, but I can ask for a yard and a quarter. So that gives me a little extra fabric than I need, which is all right, because I always like getting a little extra, so I can always cut it off if I need to. So that's how you would figure out. So instead of one yard of fabric, if you do it this way, if you end up doing it this way, you would need a little bit more, which equals one and a quarter yards. Let's look at an example of what if it's a little bit bigger than what we originally had. So let's say my width of my window that I need to cover is still 36 inches, but now my length is 72 inches because I want it to go all the way down to the floor. So if this is the case, you still have the same situation where you have max 45 inch width fabric or you have 60 inch width fabric. The 72 isn't gonna fit in either one of these widths. So in this particular case, you then put the 36 as the width of the fabric, so you're fitting in here, and you have to purchase 72 inches of fabric. 72 inches actually equal two yards. So if you have 72 inches in length, then you would be purchasing two yards of the 45 or two yards of the 60 inch width fabric. Now there may be an advantage though, if it's actually a little bit less than that. Let's say it's 36 by 58. I would still have to get two yards of the 45 because I can't fit 58 and 45. So I'd still be doing 36 and then purchasing 58 inches. So two yards is a little bit more than that, but you can always trim it down a little bit. 60 inches though, 58 inches go into 60 inches. So I can put this as the max width of my fabric, and then again, only purchase 36 inches. So I only need to get a yard. So this is where if you get the wider width fabric, you have a little bit of an advantage. What if your measurements are big and it won't fit in a 45 or 60, no matter if you use the width or the length? So here's my last example. 
In this particular case, the width that I need to cover is 60 inches and the length is 80 inches. My choice here is 45 inch width fabric or 60 inch width fabric. And that doesn't really seem to work if I'm using 45. So in this particular case, if I'm using 45 inch width fabric, I can do two panels. So I have one panel of 30 by 80 and then I have another by the same thing. So here's my drawing here. And I'm just putting one on one side of my rod and one on the other side. And if you close them up and you put them right next to each other, you may not even know that you have two panels of curtains. And you can do as many panels as you want. There's no rule that says you only can do one. So now that I have broken this up and I'm gonna do two panels of 30 by 80, all I have to do is just figure out like I did before. So the 30 can fit in the 45. So I need to get 80 inches of fabric, which comes out to around two and a quarter yards. But because I'm creating two panels, I multiply that by two, and my total amount is four and a half yards of fabric that I need to get. So that's gonna be quite a bit of fabric that you're gonna have to work with, but that's the way it's gonna be if you're doing with a large window. Now, if you're doing the actual 60 inch width fabric, you can probably get away just doing one panel of 60 by 80. So you don't have to break it up and do two panels. You can if you want, but you don't have to. So then you would only need two and a quarter yards because the 60 can go into the 60, and so you just have to purchase 80 yards of fabric. So obviously this isn't gonna cover every example that you're gonna run across, but you just have to be creative. Look at how much fabric you need to purchase and then try to find a creative way in order to get that amount to cover your window. Now at this point, we have our fabric all sorted out. We have our piece cut out that we need for our curtain. So now we're gonna start sewing it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is finish the edges of the curtain. So this is gonna be the sides of the curtain. So this is the top of my curtain and I have a side here, a side on this side, and then the bottom is this direction. So I'm just doing the sides right now. So I'm doing this side and then I'm doing my side that's over there. So to do that, I'm just gonna do a very narrow type of hem. I'm just going to grab my sewing gauge and my straight pins and on my raw side here, because we don't wanna have any raw edges to our curtain, I have a wrong side facing up. I'm gonna fold over to the wrong side and I'm gonna measure a half inch. So that's a little big, just make it a little smaller here. So once you have a half inch, that looks like it's about right, you're gonna do the half inch all the way down both sides. Then you're going to press it. So this is all gonna be pressed and you're gonna have a nice crease right down here at the fold. Once you have that, remove your pin and this raw edge here at the top, you're just gonna fold it to your crease and then you're gonna pin it again. So what you're gonna have left here is gonna be a quarter of an inch. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that to both sides. Then we're gonna take it to our machine and we're gonna stitch right along the top of that fold there. So that's gonna give it a nice finished edge on both sides. When sewing down my narrow hems on the side, I'm just gonna keep my stitch right along this top fold line here. And I'm just doing a regular width stitch. Don't forget to back stitch on both ends because we wanna make sure it's not coming out. And you're just gonna do it all the way down for both sides. Now we're gonna create our pocket that's gonna be at the top of the curtain. So here's my top edge of the curtain. And what I'm gonna do is I'm still looking at the wrong side, I'm gonna turn it over my fabric to the wrong side so you can see the wrong, right side. So this is where my pocket's going to be. So you turn it over whatever the diameter of your rod is. So for me, it's one inch. Plus I'm gonna add a half inch because I'm gonna turn some of it under. So I'm just gonna measure. And you'll notice that I left my salvage on because it's gonna be tucked under anyways. You're not gonna see it and it just kinda helps with the fraying. So I just left it on, save myself some time. All right, so that looks about right. You're gonna go ahead and press it. 
and then you're going to go back through and you're going to tuck some of this under. Now I added a half inch, but you're not going to tuck under a half inch because we don't want this pocket to fit so perfectly that it's going to be hard for the rod to get in it into the pocket. So I'm just going to do a 3 8 inch tuck. So I'm moving my sewing gauge to an inch and an eighth. So now if I pull this out, I tuck it under. I just have to measure this top pocket and see if it's an inch and an eighth. A little bit more. So that way it gives me a, you know, a little bit of wiggle room here. I'm still going to be sewing as close to the edge of the fold as I can because if you go too far, then you're just making your pocket smaller. So then I would just repin it, go ahead and do it for the whole length of the top. Then you go and you sew right along the fold line, like I said, and that creates the pocket. So then the pocket will be done and you'll be able to get the rod in. Now I want to tell you about a way to make the top of the curtain a little bit fancier. It's not difficult at all. And so in this case, when my rod goes in, let's pretend like this is my rod, the rod sits at the very top of the pocket, but some people like it. If I was to make this bigger, the pocket actually ends right about here, so the rod would go in here, there would be another stitch here, and then the top of the curtain gathers up at the top, so it creates sort of a ruffled look at the very top of the curtain. So if you want to do something like that, I would add another inch or so, depending on how tall you want your ruffle to be, to your curtain length. So this is when you're doing your measurements and you're adding everything up. Just add another inch to the length. You do the same exact thing. So for example, if my rod was an inch, it's the diameter. And then I add another half inch for turning under, and then if I have a ruffle at the top, I would add another half inch, so it would be two inches. And I said add an inch for the ruffle, is because you have half of the ruffle on this side and half of the ruffle on, on the front, so that's why it's now a half inch, because I just divided it in half. So now I move this to two inches. It's the same, same exact thing. It's really easy to do, and it gives it an extra special look. All right, so then I do two inches. I turn this under 3 eighths of an inch, and I stitch right along the fold line. Same exact thing so far. Then you're going to measure, okay, this is where my curtain rod's going to be. So I do um, maybe an inch, an inch and an eighth again. So I have that extra wiggle room. I make note of where it is from my fold line, and then I do another stitch right at the top here. So then the curtain rod has a very specific place that it's going in, like that. You have your stitch at the top to hold it there, and then that creates the extra space at the top of your curtain, so you create that ruffled gather look. But I'm just going to do the regular rod at the top. So I'm just going to go ahead and fold my original inch and a half, turn it under, and stitch it to create the pocket. The last thing we need to do is just the hem, and then our curtain's done. So. You're going to do your hem for whatever you allowed yourself when you did your original measurements. And you could do your hem whatever you want when you do your measurements. You can do a narrow one like you did on the side here, which is just a half folded into a quarter. You can do a big one. There's no rules. You do whatever you want. I'm doing an inch and a half because that's what I figured out when I did my original measurements. So just like we did with the pocket, you measure up an inch and a half pin it all the way along the bottom. Go ahead and press it on this folded edge so we get a nice crisp edge. And then once you do that, I'm going to turn under a half inch so that I have an inch left on the wrong side of my curtain because I'm working on the wrong side just like I've done all these other steps. Measure that, pin it, you can go ahead and press it if you want. And then just like we did before, you're going to stitch right along the top of that fold line. And then that's all you have to do. And then you can enjoy your curtains and put them up on your rod. And here I have the completed curtain. 
You can see it's gathered at the top and mine is actually quite small, but you can make it as long as you'd like if you want to do a valance or you want to do something extremely long. Also, if you do long curtains, you can also create a tie back of looks. You just put the tie back down in the middle and that will kind of swag the curtain towards the wall and then drape down. So that's all it takes in order to make your own curtains. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over a hundred sewing video tutorials. New tutorials are released regularly, so make sure to subscribe to be notified of the next release. Thanks for watching!